welcome to introduction to nanoscience and nanotechnology lecture number 17. I am Dr. Pervez Ahmed. In this lecture, again, so we will have a discussions on the synthesis technique for the nanomaterials. But here, uh, uh, we will choose uh, another technique uh, that is called solution depositions. Inside the solution deposition, we, uh, we have further more techniques, or uh, we can say that solutions deposition technique is further uh, divided into several techniques that, uh, I mean, is a main point of the discussion in today's lecture. So let's proceed towards today's lectures. So solution deposition consists of basically uh, three different kind of technique. The first is called uh, self-assembly, the second uh, electroplating, and the third is called uh, spin coding. So let's discuss them uh, one by one. First, uh, self-assembly. Self-assembly is basically, I mean, a very good technique in uh, biology. Uh, I mean, we can say that mostly uh, the self-assembly technique that, that involves the biological process. And a good example uh, of that is, uh, I mean, the, uh, we have a cell membrane. Uh, here you can see that in the cell membranes we have uh, lipid bilayers uh, that is being made up of uh, possible lipid molecules. So that is a, a very good example of self assembly. Uh, I mean that's the molecule assembled by itself and they're making the nanostructures. So I mean this is the technique particularly related with the uh, biology or uh, with the biomedical process uh, that is particularly linked uh, with the nanotechnology. So how do we define the self-assembly uh, while particularly relating it to uh, the nanoscience and nanotechnology? So let's have uh, some specific definitions of the uh, self-assembly. So what is uh, self-assembly? Uh, so self-assembly is basically the creations of the materials. From materials we mean nanomaterials here because the course is nano. So in uh, nano, the self-assembly is basically the creations of the nanomaterials from its constituents component in a spontaneous, uh, that is, uh, natural manner. Uh, so what it mean? It mean that uh, by an interactions uh, between the components or by a specific rearrangement of them uh, that proceed naturally without any special external impetus. I mean, uh, there is no external force involved to enforce the molecule or atom to assemble. I mean, all the process uh, that occur is spontaneous or uh, nature. I mean, there is nothing, uh, I mean, uh, nothing that we could supply or we need to supply from uh, the external all the thing happen by itself. I mean, the molecule adjust itself, they get together by itself or spontaneous, and they make the larger scale molecule uh, that come to the nanoscale. So that's why we call that uh, self-assembly. And this is also known since the molecule come by itself, rearrange themselves, uh, I mean, from a different point of view. So uh, sometimes it's also known as a Brownian uh, assembly. So example, uh, what is an example of the self-assembly? So good example of self-assembly uh, is that of protein structures uh, that we find in the cell, uh, such like uh, micro microtube, uh, uh, mi mi microtubules, actin filaments, and uh, similar uh, other uh, biomolecules. So here we should remember that uh, although uh, individual proteins stoichiometrically move within a cell, uh, that we call the bra, I mean, that we can say that uh, the proteins have some sort of the uh, Brownian motions within the cell, but we remember uh, they eventually stick to a specific place as properly positioned part of an uh, other structures. So sometimes uh, we have, uh, I mean, uh, a fiction concept in the uh, nano, uh, or nanotechnology that we call nano robot. Some people term also that to uh, a sample assembler, uh, but uh, this term is not related to self assembler. Uh, we remember this is just a factional concept uh, that is, uh, I mean, more uh, speculative uh, nano faction concept uh, relevant to the self assembly. That is, the people normally say that uh, that nano board. Uh, that is being responsible or uh, with that we can further uh, do the best with the self-assembly. So, but this, this is not relevant or uh, this is not the related term uh, to self-assembler. So, self-assembly is basically the process mostly involved with the biological molecules so where a different molecule or constituents or a component, uh, they arrange themselves in a spontaneous manner 
or a natural way and they mark the uh, nano size uh, object so that's why we call them as uh, self assembly so here you can see a good example uh, an image of a block or polymer uh, this this is a type uh, uh, this is a, uh, a polymer with two component uh, which will not uh, max I mean uh, here you can see that this kind of molecule uh, I mean this is copolymer being made from the two component um, but uh, here uh, it is such a component uh, that will not uh, max uh, thus the architecture of the chain forces uh, the organization and to uh, the lamellae so this is a good example of the sand assembly process so there are a lot more you can see about the self assembly but be remember this is just an introduction so the upper self assembly that is here is such a process where the constituent or component uh, i mean they uh, they get together or they bond spontaneously or naturally to make the uh, larger scale or the nanoscale uh, molecule so that's why we call that uh, we call the process as uh, self assembly the next, uh, I mean, solution deposition technique for the nanomaterial, we have electroplating. So, what is electroplating? An electroplating is basically an electrochemical process where metal ions are transferred from solutions and are deposited, uh, deposited as a thin layer onto surface of a uh, cathode. So, how it works? Uh, here you can see uh, the experimental setup. Uh, for the electroplating uh, process. So how uh, what do we have? Uh, here you can see that in this setup uh, it is being composed of a DC circuit uh, with uh, an electrode and a cathode. I mean here you can see that we have an anode that is being made from nickel uh, and we have a cathode. Uh, cathode is being made from uh, the copper and both of these they are setting in a bath of solution so this is a bath of solutions you can see it here uh, and this bath of solution has the metal ion necessary for uh, the coating or plating so here uh, you can see that I mean this the setup is just like this I mean the copper uh, the copper cathode is reduced that is it accepts the electrons and here we have the nickel anode nickel anode is oxidized that is gives uh, the electron so nickel ions within the solution become attractive to copper cathode. I mean, this is how uh, the electroplating process uh, is work. Uh, be remember, uh, electroplating process is very important, and this sort of the process uh, can enhance the chemical properties. Uh, that is, uh, it in, uh, increase the corrosion resistance. I mean, it can act some sort of the corrosion protective materials. I mean, it can protect the materials. With the help of electroplating, you can protect a material from uh, from the corrosions. I mean, uh, it can stop the uh, the corrosive process of any material if you have a good proper. I mean, uh, electroplating on that particular uh, surface of a materials. Uh, along with that, uh, I mean, the physical properties can also be enhanced with the electroplating. That is, uh, with the help of electroplating, we can increase the thickness of the a part so which in other words in his uh, enhance the uh, the relevant physical properties uh, along with that it can also enhance the the chemical proper uh, the mechanical properties an example of that is tensile strength or hardness so uh, tensile strength and hardness can be increased uh, with the uh, electroplating another technique for the solution depositions uh, i mean that uh, well-known technique we call that uh, spin coating so spin coating uh, as compared to the rest of the two that we already described is a cheap and fast method to produce homogeneous layer uh, so what actually happened in this technique uh, i mean you can see it here uh, we have an excess amount of the solvent uh, i mean you, you can see it there and uh, this solvent is placed on a substrate and this is the substrate and here is the solvent uh, that is being placed from an outside source uh, on the substrate and what happened next uh, then this solvent I mean which is initially placed on the substrate uh, then in the next step it is rotated at a high speed I mean we have a rotor here and with the help of this rotor uh, I mean this is 
the solution at the top of a substrate it is being rotated at a high speed so what is the purpose of rotation the purpose of rotation is to uh, uh, I mean uh, we, we, we rotate these solutions now with a high speed in order to spread the fluid uh, by centrifugal force I mean the, the purpose of the rotation is uh, to spread the, the, the fluid that we have put here or the solution that we have put here at the top of the substrate uh, at the top of the substrate uh, to spread it uniformly at the uh, at the substrate uh, surface so then uh, once we spread it so what actually uh, uh, what actually happened uh, we form uh, a film so that the film thickness can be adjusted by uh, varying the rotation speed I mean first we put the solutions then we set it uh, we, we have a rotor and the rotor we we set it on uh, rotations so the rotation basically uh, spread the solution uniformly with the help of uh, with the help of centrifugal uh, force and after that we form a film uh, so be remember uh, this film thickness basically depend upon uh, the rotation speed I mean if you want to adjust the thickness of this film so you have to adjust uh, I mean the rotation speed I mean uh, thickness is totally dependent upon uh, the rotation speed along with that uh, the rotation time and the concentration of the solution that is how much concentration you uh, utilize uh, I mean it is also affect uh, the thickness of the film so the thickness of the film is dependent upon uh, the certain factors the first of which uh, is the rotation speed of the rotors or the spin quarters uh, second is the rotation time that is for how long uh, you want to rotate and the concentration of solution that is how much concentration of solution you have utilized uh, I mean th these are the factors which affect uh, the thickness of the uh, film so uh, there are also some advantage uh, of this technique that is uh, spin coding uh, the disadvantage of this method is that it is limited by the solvent uh, and that no lateral uh, resolution is possible so this is the only disadvantage of this particular uh, technique um, now the question is where we can utilize uh, this technique so spin coding technique is widely used in micro fabrications where when we want to uh, make the devices the smaller scale or uh, micro scale devices so there we can utilize uh, the spin coating technique so it can be used to create thin film uh, with the thickness below uh, 10 nanometer so you can create easily create a uh, smaller scale uh, thin film that is up to uh, or below uh, the range of 10 nanometers uh, that can be utilized in the uh, micro fabrications along with that uh, this kind of the technique uh, I mean is extensively used to deposit layer of uh, portal resist about uh, one micrometer thick I mean light sensitive material so we can create light sensitive material with the help of a uh, spin coating uh, technique uh, with the thickness of about uh, one micrometer so that's all we have for uh, this lecture. Hope you enjoy a lot. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, but stay tuned for the next lectures uh, because the next lecture we will have discussions on the full rents. That what are full rents? How are they made? They been made and who uh, have and what invented them for the first time or discovered them for the first time? So stay tuned for the next lecture. That will be lecture number eighteen. Till then, bye bye.